so we're going to talk about the visual assessment and of course, um, as optometrists, we have a ton of different measurements we do. Um, this is kind of what I go over when I'm talking to physical therapists about things that I think that they can safely um, incorporate in terms of screenings to know when to refer to us. Um, so, ugh. Oh, no. Okay, so when I talk about assessments for the OT and PT, um, the King DVIC or the developmental eye movement test is a good one. Um, King DVIC has a lot of research and it's, uh, I believe Mayo Clinic maybe owns it now with um, the impact test that kind of is a, a bundled up. But um, checking for, we'll, we'll show you that one. The, the VOMS, the vestibular ocular motor screening, how many of our professionals are doing that? Cool, cool. Um, the VOMS is incredible. Because it wasn't developed by optometrists, but it's all visual testing. It's really, really interesting. So I think, do you talk about it? Okay. Um, EOM, so just looking at those extraocular motilities, let's make sure all of our um, cranial nerves are intact. The near point of convergence, like we talked about, um, is a good to screen for you guys as far as picking things up, not necessarily sole diagnostic criteria for convergence insufficiency. Maddox rod, I think, is an easy screening tool that you guys can do. Uh, stereo testing, again, another way to just, all right, are we, what, are we getting some abnormal findings to kick them over to the optometrist? This doesn't hurt my feelings. I don't get any, um, you know, ego involved as far as physical therapists or occupational therapists incorporating some of these things as a way to know when to kick them to us. I think that they're simple, quick and dirty tests. Um, and then dynamic visual acuity and um, a binasal uh, occlusion screening. I know the, the PTs and OTs in the level one from Canada, they'll do a screening to see how does the patient perform. Um, they don't prescribe by nasal occlusion. They send them out to us to do that part of it, but they say, do we see an improved um, performance? I think this died. I don't know if we want to see if we can get no, some. Just oh, yay. Um, so the King D Divic. <laughs> You're fine. Um, so it is the first the demonstration card where they get some help. Uh, following the lines from number to number. Then they get less on that return sweep. Um, then they space them out. And then, uh, again, we're a little bit more crowded. We're more likely to get errors and have them go through each one. They do this on the sideline. Um, it re does require a baseline for the... Uh, the um, the research was done with a baseline. So our athletic trainers, man, there's so much stuff coming out all the time that for them to do as pre-screening baselines. I mean, they're spending so much time on pre-screening baselines, and with every new thing that comes out um, that that gets advertised, I think it's putting a lot of pressure on them to have to determine, okay, what's the most bang for my buck? What tells me the most information? Because it's putting a lot of athletes through these pre-screening um, baselines. Sometimes you can coordinate with the school and you can run some DEMs as pre-screening for the athletic trainer. They would love that. The Dynavision has some, if anybody has a big Dynavision board, um, they have some baseline testing. And so uh, I've done that for, you know, the football team. And I say, call me if something comes up and we can run it again before they go back to return to play and check their reaction time. So we can get involved in helping the athletic trainers and get our foot in the door with some of these um, teams. So one way to do it. Ocular motor uh, range of motion. So again, we're just checking to make sure all those cranial nerves are intact and that we're seeing um, both eyes move conjugately and smoothly. This is our physiological um, H. Pursuit movement um, for testing for that. Let's see, let, go ahead and show them what you do. slowing them down to see what's happening as far as new pursuits. And then we actually do our VMG goggles, infrared goggles from a vestibular audiologist side of things or through our friends on lenses can rec video record the smooth pursuits. So that's what this one is. And you're getting, you might say it differently, I call this saccadic intrusions. Is that right? Am I saying the right word? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> 
zoconic intrusions to override because sleep pursuit is not working. So then we can video capture this, and it's a nice objective thing to then show the patient, this is what's going on, and this is why you're feeling the way you are. So these would be, this would be smooth pursuits within infrared goggles to be able to record for video. I went and shadowed a vestibular audiologist one day and saw some of these measurement tools they have, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so jealous, um, because they have some amazing uh, videography equipment. Um, vestibular person will be here Saturday and Sunday in the exhibit hall, and she's, she has created with her husband, she's a PT, he's a We're used to like OCTs that are like 80,000 and Optimap, so we're, we're down for the little equipment. Um, so, Cicade, so I like the Insuco test. Um, how many of you use that from Adam Maples? Um, I like that test because um, what I'm doing, the biggest reason I like it is because the patient stands up. Lo and behold, you know, at an eye exam that the patient would actually stand up, um, and usually they're very confused by that, that an eye doctor is doing that, and um, what you're doing is holding them and saying, okay, look at the silver. When I say switch, you look at the gold, and you kind of vary your timing, and they have to do five round trips horizontally, five round trips vertically, and then you do the same thing with pursuits. Um, that I'm going around their head twice or two and a half rotations, again, it's five trips, two and a half rotations the opposite way. Um, and the thing that sometimes I'll see with pursuit movements is um, what you're, with physical therapists and occupational therapists we talk about is you're not just doing EOM. So pursuit movement, you're more looking, you know, around um, this zone, this many degrees or um, inches versus those big EOM movements where you're trying to get them in, um, let's see how, what's the range of motion and what's, how far can they go. So there is a difference between those two things. Um, show, we show the nose pen nose that you like to do. I actually have done away with it. Okay, cool. I've done away with the nose pen, nose pen, nose pen. Um, only because that's just one of the saccadic systems, right? What do you, how much do you do nose pen, nose pen, nose pen all day long? <laughs> Is that what you do all day long? No, we're not telling our eyes to go from object to object. I like to use the king. I say Devic, she says Devic. I say saccadic, she says Kate. <laughs> 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 Yes. Uh, you know I mean? But I actually have gone away from that, and I actually want to see functionally what they're doing from a functional perspective. So I actually, I mean, I may look at it just briefly, but I, like, they go right into the king debate tip. Mm -hmm. okay, um, so I can measure that objectively from a functional standpoint for reading. Does that make sense? So I don't think this, I mean, it's nice for accuracy, and you all, may, I, you know, but for me, I want to see function. What mm -hmm. technologies come out when they're actually using their Yep, yep. So, um, and most of us are probably incorporating a visograph or a DEM or. Such mm -hmm. um, okay, so convergence. Um, if, you're, if you've never done NPC and you want to start incorporating it, like I said, there is debate about uh, where this test what was the original instructions as far as the center of rotation? I think you guys, are you guys all doing MPC? Were you taught tip of the nose? Yeah. Um, and so some of the things is just, again, watching the speed. We do it three times. We like to repeat it to see, do they get worse each time? Do they fatigue? Yep. And I'm also going to know is um, which eye is going out. Okay. Um, I, I want to watch that. So sometimes a patient will get the PT, they'll say they, they have a receded MPC um, because they're measuring from a different location. So sometimes our measurements don't add up and then I send them back and they're like, I'm like, wow, we were off by, wouldn't you know it, about the distance from the center of rotation in the nose. So it, it can get a little bit dicey. I try to um, like use assessment tools that I can speak with them about. So sometimes I'll kind of talk about my measurements or in my reports to when I'm sending it to the PT so that we know we're speaking the same language. Um, for example, she asked me if I use a can see the um, convergence and sufficiency symptom scale. And I said, no, I use the post-concussion symptom scale. She uses the um, convergence 
CISS so that she can um, pick up on visual stuff and talk to me. And I use the post-concussion symptom scale because that's what all my neurologists and sports med docs and PTs are using. And I use that scale so that I can talk to them um, and hand that along. So kind of interesting. Uh, and it's good to look at what are, what are the other areas of the profession using so that we can all be monitoring that patient's um, symptoms.